Peace and love and happiness to you, family. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my mukbang. And so this is a rendition of a recipe that I've already prepared this month-ish. We got some salsa, piping hot. Mm -hmm. You can see the steam. Mm -hmm. And then I have some leftover chicken stew, which I mix with, you know, my favorite. A little chopped up Italian sausage just to put a little bit, more, little bit more meat in there and whatnot, whatnot in the stew so that I'm not just having chicken and just stew and just... My dad would probably call this like a goulash, but, uh -huh, or with the accent, goulash. But, um, dad, I love you. So, and then I wanted to get rid of the breakfast sausage. <laughs> so, we're just having a mixture of stuff in here with some salsa. This is piping hot. This is piping hot. And so, we're going to say our prayers. And then we'll get into it. Thank you all for this program. About to eat. Please bless the hands that have prepared it. May you bless your body. Thank you so much for being a provider in this home. May you bless all those that are watching. We thank you, Lord, in advance for all the blessings to come. In the mighty name of Jesus and the church says, Amen. Hi. So, I've been hot. Um, crushed red peppers. Mm -hmm. Peppers, <laughs> just a little bit, and then and then and then, yeah, I should have got a fork so I could stir it up because this thing is gonna get burnt if we stir it up. If we stir it up, um, already been drinking some of my um ocean cocktail on the rocks with a dash, a more than a dash of lemon juice. Hmm? Overdid it. Okay, not so tangy. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. When it hits the back of the tongue there. With some lemon juice, because since we're out of uh lemons. Mm -hmm. Lemon 100 percent lemon juice works. <sighs> Alrighty, guys. We gotta tackle this food. Okay. It's hot. So, how are you doing today? We can get into that. Comment that. Comment. Comment. Comment down below. <laughs> comment. Comment down below. Ding, 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 ding. And let me know how you're doing. How your day is going. What's going on? What's going on so far in your life? And this time and moment in 2020. 2020. Get in here, don't get burnt. Oh man, this is piping hot. I don't know why I've said this before. I don't know why I do it to myself. Overheat food. I just want to eat my food. Yeah. That's all I want to do is eat my food. So what, did, what are you all watching? Whether it's out at the movie theaters at home wink wink Cody who said that um or I'm just like you didn't hear anything hmm? um and or Netflix Hulu whatever your streaming services are what are you watching any series 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 Seriouses. Seriouses. Siri? Mm. Seriouses. How, how about just any episodes, seasons? Mm. How about that? I finished watching um, Witcher on Netflix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I loved it. So now I find out they there is a whole book series or something like that. Series? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it. Um, on Witcher. So now instead of waiting, which I, I don't know, I my hands, but it's, 
when I watch seasons, seasons, when I watch a season on Netflix and I finish it, I typically don't just wait in anticipation. I told you all, I think it's the Messiah that I'm kind of like, what are they going to do? Is he or is he not? That one kind of, I'm keeping an eye out on that one when it comes back because I finished that season. But Witcher, I love it. And my husband said, well, he said it was based on a video game, but I guess because he knows about some of the video game world, then I found out that there was a whole book to this. So I was like very excited because then I'm like, it's a gateway. Let me check it out. But also, of course, as you know, that most times not everything goes exactly as the book is written when they remake it for TV or and or big theaters. Movies, I should say. But it might get me ahead a little bit. All right. Hold it. So that it does it doesn't go anywhere. It's still piping hot, you all. Um get my little bowl to scoopage. To scoopage. Scoop to the loo, my darling. Alright, so this recipe here is in one of the Sundays of this month. And I will link it to this video for this sadza. This is sadza, it's a cornmeal texture. So if you even haven't looked at the recipe, just picture probably far-fetched analogy ish ish, kind of like a grits maybe getting and you thicken it way thicker than grits are made to stiffen it. Um, we, I'm using the oh cornmeal. What is it? No, no, melto meal. I think hmm? porridge, but like melto meal, <laughs> thicken it to a thick consistency. But you also have to let it like sit. There's a way about doing it, and then you use this carbohydrate to eat with any savory item. Usually, I like to have it with greens, mustard greens, collard greens. Today, I'm having it with stew. Uh oh, I'm losing one because it's hot down there. And I'm not trying to dig that low. But I get burnt. I want my suds up. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alrighty. Break you off a piece. It's really. Solid and so typically I might have mentioned this before, but I just like to reiterate in case I've got new subscribers. Oh, what? Pause, wait a minute. What? What? If I have new subscribers here, go ahead and subscribe. Oh, for more, right there. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and hit the thumbs up and share the video and thank you so much for joining me and all the returning subbies thank you so much friend, friend. Mm -hmm. so this is eaten in all different forms you can eat this around a gathering of people have a whole bunch of sides right here and some meat Eat it collectively as a group. It's fun. You share stories, you kiki, and so forth. And or individual servings like this in this household, like I've said before, it's this one. And so my husband, I told him that I'm gonna do a collab with him. He's given me a number, a goal number to reach, and he says that's when I'm gonna come in on your uh, collab. But shh, he has not eaten um, my cornmeal ball. He calls them cornmeal balls. This whole time I've been together, he just politely says next time or whatever, whatever, whatever. We know what that means. And so um, when I do my first collab, I'm whispering my kids here, but he's not. Um, when I do my first collab with my husband, my first and only collab with my husband, um, I'm thinking I'm going to make this so that he can eat it. Mm -hmm. Shh. It's 
gonna be a surprise. I'd like to see his reaction. <laughs> Got it. And so, um, so you all please help me reach my goal. Subscribe to the video if you have not. Let's get him here eating some salsa with his woman's woman salsa. And so salsa is indigenous to Africa. Um, I did this well salsa is indigenous to Zimbabwe. It's a staple food of Zimbabwe. Okay, so cornmeal or maize, same thing, are ground up and made into fine powder. Now, different parts of Africa eat similar foods. They have ugali and shima, uh, ugali and shima, and I believe, like I said before, that fufu um, up on the northern region might be from the cassava ground, cassava plant slash maybe ground plantain as well, which plantain is green bananas. So, but I am familiar that most of this stiffened cornmeal mixture is indigenous to um, African parts. Now I have seen some island. Got some chicken in here. And oh, I done flipped that chicken over, guys. And there go the steam. Steamy steam. Ah, my fingers is burning. It burns. Gosh darn it. I want a piece of meat. Pete's sake, what does Pete got to do with it? Ouch. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pace yourself. So, I don't know where I was with our little um, road tour lesson here. But, uh, and like I said, this might sound repetitious from the past sides of video. I apologize. I probably linked that too. What's going on with my nail here? I don't know what I'm saying. These are the utensils. I'll probably link that video and also how to make salsa on this video. All right, this chicken is hot. It's really hot. What I get? Saruda wako kadea dea nenduro chena. Ow, 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 ow. Hot. Saruda wako means choose yours nobody has given me a translation for kadea dea if anybody's watching this and has a translation my auntie my mom yeah i don't know we just grew up singing it and it's off the shauna um tongue okay for the mashana land of the zimbabwe Zimbabwe means houses made of stone. Zim, Zimba, Zimbabwe. So when you look at Africa as a whole in the spectacle of Egyptian pyramids and um, all the uh, monuments and all the wonders of it, there is a region in Zimbabwe called Great Zimbabwe, which is an area that always was a fascination to a lot of people, but uh, we could have told you that. <laughs> They, for years, they thought they, um, foreign, not indigenous people built this great Zimbabwe because this is a, um, it's almost like a citadel or citadel, depending where you live, um, still half existing, but it's stone upon stone upon, I mean, brick upon brick upon brick upon stone, but like perfectly layered with no cement, no, um, agents to hold them together and they just perfectly built and you could tell that it was still existing it was like a, it was like a big whatever 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 yard i guess <laughs> big thing and then like 
there was a pathway in between as a security measure. So you can kind of tell the arch the architect off that land itself is really intriguing. Um, it wasn't until probably two or three years ago some scientists finally cracked the code and realized that this was a place built by indigenous people. I'm not sure why the quandary was or what the confusion was that I'm not sure why they didn't think locals couldn't do that. IDK. I don't know. But one thing I'm really fascinated about and excited about is the introduction of science. Um, and I find it very intriguing because I think we're rewriting lots of aspects of history through these new discoveries. So it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a satisfying meal. So I speak only on, on my experiences and that doesn't represent every Zimbabwean home. But it was like at a certain age as a young girl, you're learning how to cook to get prepared for marriage. Uh-huh. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Like I've said before, I think I probably was either 12, 13, somewhere that age, young, learning how to cook. Um, it's part, I mean, it was, I'd say it was part of the culture. It's part of what happened in my household, I guess, because you might have something about going to say, that's not what we did. Okay, well, I just know that's what we did. Okay. So I remember growing up and it's just, you know, your parents love you. They're just looking out for their kids. So the major thing is as a girl child, you have to learn. My, my younger sisters, they don't know none of this. They don't. They don't. They were like super babies when we came out here. But um so making this test, the prerequisite is really being able to cook this, finish this product with no lumps in it. Now let's go back to the domestication of the woman, the girl child and going into womanhood. So that there's a dowry system in place. So typically you get a traditional wedding. Mm-hmm. That the moment when you're in the house by yourself and you hear a sound. <sighs> what would life am? So, there's a dowry system set in place. It's tradition. Oh, these are traditions that have been there for centuries centuries and centuries right probably before right? before i was born i can't say probably i know it was way before i was born born um so the emphasis is you're raising your daughter your girl child to just grow up being domesticated knowing how to cook and everything like that yes god bless the western countries hallelujah hallelujah but uh any who's is so like the dowry will consist of the man paying for the woman. So, some of the prerequisites for the woman is does she cut? Is she clean? If she's a virgin, the ticket goes up. 
Uh, and she educated. The ticket goes up. So, you know, and part of the tradition is um, that the man that's marrying into this family is saying thank you to this family for raising this woman, the stellar woman that's going to be his wife, his children's mother, and here's a diary of my appreciation. So now, just depends on the family, okay? So if you sometimes the families reside in the suburbs, they might just want a cat. I mean, a car, you know, or cash. Um, sometimes the family members reside in the village where they can uh, maintain livestock. They might just want livestock. And sometimes even if family resides in the suburbs, but they might have property in the villages, so they might just want maybe 10 herds of uh, cows, you know? Hold on. Yeah. Yes. Bulls. Yeah, male cows. So it would be like specific, maybe three bulls and seven heifers. You know, a heifer is a female cow. All right? I think of some certain type of breed. Whatever. You get the point. And so all the pricing of the for the female bride is contingent on the males from the father's side. So it'll be my dad's brothers, any male that's existing and living from my dad's side. So my mother, my father, they have nothing, uh, no say so on how much I cost. So my dad's brothers, uncles, male counterparts, whoever is around will come together and set a price ticket. That needs to be paid. That needs to be paid before I can technically marry my husband. That's how the tradition goes. And so typically you have a, in my country, you will have. And so typically when the amounts are figured out for dowry, then the man, the fiance, the man has to come up with whatever it is. If it's cattle, if it's money, if it's a car, then they have to come up with that before you do the white wedding for the most part. Now, I don't know if there's layaway plans accepted, you know, buy now, pay later, you know, 3% down or 0.5 interest. I don't know if that's, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. I'm telling you from what I remember of the traditions <laughs> and um so what do they do for the boy children so boy children typically they for the most part they're raised to work work hard so that they could be able and save their money so that they could be able to get them a wifey for the most part are these traditions still practiced i did care i don't know Mm. One of the things that a son-in-law, a future son-in-law will do is the dowry is being paid to the parents and there's also a, a suitcase for the mother. So the man would buy, like my fiancé would buy, which you all know I'm married, but this is an example. But my fiancé would buy a big suitcase and fill it in with her. Like, Either my mom's face. Now, that part, I don't know if they ask my mom what she wants, but usually it's like new dresses, you know, gold watches, necklaces, um, the finer things in life. This is all a system placed to say thank you for raising this Stella woman. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit of that history and culture, a little tradition. So hence, when it comes to divorce time, refund? Uh, uh, it becomes complicated. You see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? 
Mm -mm, no, ma'am. I could be wrong in this part, but I believe if the marriage doesn't work out, the woman's family has to return. I don't know if it's half or all of the proceeds. I could be wrong in this. But. So. Like I said, those are traditions as I knew them. Things change a lot. Times change, things change. But I know those traditions have been in place for centuries. You know what I'm saying? So. So. And so this dish right here can be eaten. I guess I'm going to eat for breakfast if you want. But it's really heavy. So lunches. Dinner. It's really not a snack. Because of its rich because of its richness. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when this starts to dry up, it kind of crusts up and creates a skin. Yep. So yeah, it was always funny because then growing up, I mean, it's just jokes, I guess, you know. Parents really want to make sure that they go to the not to party. And I used to mess with my dad being in a Western country. <laughs> I was like, Dad, you could have been a rich man because he got four girls. Four girls. You hear me? Four girls. Missed out on his retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Get this little part off so we could get down to business. Yeah. So, like, I, I was the oldest girl child, so hence the pressure was really always on me. That's why my sisters can't cook. You heard me. Y'all can't cook. You know it. Don't trick. Um, but, uh, uh, so. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure. Cause there's nothing more humiliating than a daughter being returned back to their parents for for inadequacies. So talk about having a low self-esteem when stuff like that happens, you know. So the, the paranoia in homes is like, you know, make sure your daughter knows how to cook. And you know, my dad used to always mess with me. What about if you get married over here? What are you gonna do? And I see, you know what was weird was a part of me knew. A part of me, and that's the knowing factor in one of my videos and one of my YouTube pages. When I talk about the no factor, some things you just know. I love the culture and everything like that, but a part of me just knew, like, um, I, was, I was, for some reason, I knew I was going to have a Western husband or a Western wife. So, I used to argue with my dad. Not argue, but be like, and, you know what I mean? So I like, and then what about if you get married over here? I'm like, dude, check it out. One thing I love about my parents, they're so westernized. They got their African parent tendencies. But they're so westernized. When we, my brother is the oldest. And then I have a baby sister. She's turning 18 this year, 2020. Um, so one of the things that I appreciated about my parents, even though they come from a background with different cultures, of course, traditions and whatnot, they've always said to us, we don't know, they've always said 
It doesn't matter to them who loves us. No, it doesn't matter to them who we are. We end up with, as long as we're happy and the people love us. That was the fact. It wasn't like, nah, you all got to be with an African. You know what I'm saying? And or whatever else expectations they would have tried to have, because they knew their daughter was rebellious right here. So um, they've always emphasized that. As long as they love you and treat you right, and you're happy, be accepted. And you ain't got to jump through hoops. We, should we? Should we crack this chicken bone or not? Should we or should we not crack this chicken bone? I think we should. I think I got a couple minutes on the uh, camera here. Uh, yeah. One day I'll make my story times. I just gotta put all my story times in some chronological order or something like that. I'll make my story times when coming to America. I was young. My mother was here. And my mom's a pastor. And one day I'll talk about that. If you wanna. If y'all want to see that, if you want, want to hear about the story sooner, let me know in the comments below. But if you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, go ahead, subscribe, thumbs up, hit the notification bell so we can also chit chat in any future lives to come. And also tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you in a state? Are you in your birth state? How many times have you moved? Or, you know, where were you born and where do you reside? Comment down below. Out of the states that you've lived in, which one is your favorite? If you live in the state that you were born and raised, do you plan on moving up of that state? What's your goals looking like? What's your, you know, aspirations looking like? There's nothing wrong staying in the place that you were born. Nothing at all. But just share your business. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit of your business. Yeah. Whew. I am so appreciative of every single one of you. Every single one of you that comes here and watches me and listens to me. I love you very much. I am very humble and grateful. I am full. Ocean cocktail. On the rocks. Remember, Always remember to be kind to other people. You never know what they're going through. And yes, likewise, you might be going through something as well. But sometimes it's easier to spread light into this dark world. And not of all the world is dark now. Mm -hmm. 